Um, okay, we got one more video before we dive into the game. Uh, this is something that we've talked about a lot on uh, Ink Plays on the channel. Uh, and this is actually from someone that I watch a lot and I have never watched on stream. But uh, I've watched this person, I want to say, for over 10 years. Um, he used to make StarCraft 2 um, casting commentaries and streams and things like that. And that is Day9. Uh, if you don't know who he is, he does like all video games now. But I appreciate his opinions on things. And this is about the layoffs in the gaming industry. And I'm curious what his take is on it. Uh, because generally when I watch him, he has really wicked analogies. Dude, all the layoffs that are happening in gaming, like... Wicked music, too. At the risk of sounding a little bit cynical, have you ever heard that intention is effortless? Have you ever heard this? That, like, it doesn't matter how internally honest and virtuous someone's original intention was in a lot of the cases. What matters is the actual execution. Like, for instance... Yeah, uh, okay. Let me take a really simple example. I think intention does matter, but... If my wife, every time she was talking, in my head, I was thinking wonderful, warm... <laughs> okay, I know where awful, he's going with this. ...joyous, loving things. And then, <laughs> when she's like, what do you think? I went, yeah, seems good. And that's like basically <laughs> how I talked. She, you know, it doesn't matter what the intention is. It's like the impact. Stevie, I like that. Impact is more important than intent. And I think that in the gaming space, there was a lot of really, there's, there's been a lot of really poor execution, just like, a, like okay. a lot, because I think that, um, some studios are being closed. So by the way, if you don't know what is going on here, if you're completely lost, the, this is, I think mainly going on after what happened with Xbox and uh, the gaming studio being shut for Hi-Fi Rush and like a bunch of the other studios, Sony, everything that's going on there. Got a bunch of money, hired a bunch of people, and then got to work making a very mediocre product, not because any of the individuals that are working on it are somehow the incompetence in the industry, but because the plan being presented was a weak plan. Okay. Um, and I think that there's a huge, well, I shouldn't say, I think there is a documented glut of people that went oh my gosh i think games i this think music. i want to get into games and i don't mean from like a i'm an individual in college studying to become a games program or something like that i mean like people with money going oh my gosh we should we should invest in games i see that crypto and blockchain stuff has tons of money constantly flowing in and out of it and it seems like that thing called so game yeah, so where he's going with this, I, a lot of people talk about video games as if the bubble is bursting. Like people previously could just go in, you have a lot of money, invest in a gaming studio, boom, you're printing money back to yourself. I'm kind of vaguely familiar with. Maybe games. we should just make one of those because it could connect to this well. You know, there's a lot of that sort of behavior. And so I think that there's a substantial number of studio closures that are actually not this result of greed um that people love to say because i mean if you look it is a bunch of people created a business and they themselves are shutting the business down and losing their own jobs but it's like the poor planning the poor management yeah uh, that i think like sucks. some it, some it, of the shutdowns and layoffs are from making poor games it just it just but... really sucks and i mean i think that um another thing that i think is kind of so Dan Demand says, I think a big problem in the industry is that the industry became corporatized. Anything that makes money is eventually going to become corporatized. Stinky. It's inevitable. And this is this is a very this is a very thing that's very personal to me. <laughs> Let me share something that's very personal. Okay, you ready, my friends? You ready? I'm I'm about to open my heart to you. You've heard me talk about this before. That sometimes when people will say, Hey Sean, I want to become a streamer. What should I do? Um, how is he going to relate see this? see advice that is along the lines of get a regular schedule, do collaborations, this sort of thing. And what you've heard me rant about before is that these are kind of like second layer, right? These are I second agree layer. with that a lot. The first order thing that you must be good at if you're a broadcaster or if you are making YouTube videos or if you're writing a... I wonder, like, so my thing here is just start, just start doing it. It takes us such a long time to learn how to do things, how to do them well, how to um, succeed at them, 
and how to learn from it. Even just in editing videos, it's taken me 16 years to get as good as I am now, and I'm still not great. Book or if you're making an album, what you need to do is you need to be incredibly interesting, like every 10 seconds. Hey, especially now, yes. As an example, here's, here's an exercise I want you guys to do. I want you to go download Audacity, which is an audio <laughs> recording program. This is You'll good. You probably have a crappy mic connected to. I know some exactly device, what he's going to say. Mic already. And I want you listen to, to yourself. Talk. I want you to set an alarm. I want you to hit the record button. I want you to have no other visual stimulus, no nothing on your phone, no videos you're reacting to, just nothing. Just sit there and just talk for five minutes. Stop. Put it back on, and listen to yourself talk for five minutes. It hurts, it's physically <laughs> painful, because it's so, I mean, you're just listening, you're just like, oh my God, I'm just still, still talking. Droning like, on, just talking. droning on. That's what people are tuning in for. People are tuning in to be entertained every few seconds. And so, um, when someone says to me, hey, I wanna become a streamer, what should I do? I should be like, okay, how do you become interesting every 10 seconds? Like really like every 10 seconds. And different people do that in different ways. Like some people do that by just being really freaking good at the game, whatever they're playing. Some people do that by being funny. Some people do that by knowing more about the game than other people. I do it by, uh, I don't know how I do it or if I do it, but I try. I want you to try to be compelling either with your gameplay or with your Oh, speech. that's exactly what he said. And let's assume that no one's watching the game. Really? really figure out how to be entertaining every 10 seconds. Like there's the sort of core essence of the thing, the first order thing. How do you make the thing good? And when it comes to any creative product, this is how I think about anything creative. What makes it literally actually good? The thing itself good. As an example, if you say to me, hey, we're making a game. We have uh, Kevin Hart is gonna do the voice of one of the characters. We also have a distribution deal with a great publisher in China, in Europe, in South America, in Africa. This is what Dan DeMann was saying, the corporatized side of things. Okay, we got Kevin Hart, we have a distribution deal. Uh, in Southeast Asia and right here in North America. So we have the entire global, everything taken care of. We also have you know, partnership X, Y, and Z, and we have social features that plug into X.com and but Facebook and Instagram. We have is the game everything. fun? Hmm. Like, okay, is the game fun? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, is, is it, it fun? Is it actually fun? I think that it's actually quite difficult to do that, but it's not unknowable to do that. And there's this kind of weirdness and this isn't just games, this is like all over entertainment where people will so consistently be emphasizing and talking about the thing that's easier to describe, which is like, oh, we have this great partnership with this person. Oh, we, we have industry veterans from big company A, B, and C. So you know- Games that do that with X Call of Duty devs don't all the time. Play the pedigree of the developers. Players do not play the great partnerships with publishers. Players do not play the celebrity status of the voice actors involved. They, they play, play, play the game. The game just play the game itself is it good and um i think it's very easy to get kind of sucked into this notion of well it's it's just a marketing issue that's all that it is some games can out market a bad game and uh sometimes they can't and i think a good example of that is call of duty modern warfare 2 like the most recent modern warfare 2 that game was crap it sold very well because they had good marketing However, their microtransactions and player um, player numbers dropped because the game sucked. Modern Warfare 3 comes out because it is called Modern Warfare 3 and it's coming out after a Modern Warfare 2. Nobody wants to play it. However, the game's actually better. So over time, people hear that it's better, go back to it, play it, are like, okay, this is better. So more people are playing Modern Warfare 3 now than Modern Warfare 2, even though the sales numbers were worse. And I bet you... Microtransactions are better this year. I could be wrong, but I think that's a good example of what this he's saying. Is, a, this is, a is the game good? Delightful game, but really, it's the marketing's the reason that it didn't pan out. Like ten times out of ten, when there's a game like that, and I've gone and looked at it, it's that the game is just not that good. It's 
not horrific, but just not that good. And in a world where we have unbelievable games, like, oh my gosh, I could go play Dota 2. I would love for a AAA studio to put out a game with zero marketing. They don't pay anyone to play it. They don't put out any trailers, but this game is amazing. This will never happen and see how it does. Later. In and of itself, and doing I'm that would be its own marketing, but fire up Hearthstone or Magic the Gathering. And if I'm not interested in anything multiplayer at all, I still have more stuff to go hunt in Animal Well. Like, dude, there is literally so many amazing, amazing games that being a seven out of ten, even an eight out of ten, yeah, doesn't really cut it. A lot He's of right. Time. Like, if you it's look at all the games that are being played right now, is it excellent or not? It's so many games that people just play one forever. Game? for a long excellent. time and so you need to have something that makes you stand the, out which is why uh, i question whether x defiant will stick around shut down because it's like an 8 out of 10 game maybe uh, 7.5 things like this not in every case but certainly in some of them <laughs> you'd you would look at what the announcements were two three years before their early press releases of what they were going to do you could you could read about the roadmaps that they had on their discord read about all these other partnerships that they had with person XYZ. And it's just like, who cares? Interesting to me how it's not just games is all over the place in all forms of entertainment. Could how you argue that Hell Divers 2 technically had zero marketing? Actual game itself. And what it ha didn't have a lot. It had this it, is why but not I a lot. regularly talk about how much I admire David Wolverton, or David Farland, who was an author and a writing mentor who did a lot of the business side analytics of things, talking about markets and market sizes and things like this, but was extraordinarily precise and diligent about discussing what are the actual creative properties and creative qualities in this novel, in its first pages that are doing well or not. And one of my favorite books is his book, Drawing on the Power of Resonance in Writing, where he is literally discussing like how to name characters in a way that is emotionally resonant. This that's is like, not, that's way too oh, meta. Hey, sci-fi works well with this age group. So you should consider making your like fantasy the names book, of characters, a book, right? Again, these are the sort of like outside things. This is like zooming straight into the actual creative work and the creative act, and making the thing that the, the customer experience is making that thing good. And so um, finally coming all the way back to I was going to say playoffs and things like this. It's, he, he went in a roundabout way of getting at this. I sometimes have this frustration when I see some of the businesses that have shut down. Not all of them, but some of them. Where it, it feels like there just was never a focus on the only thing that matters. Only to me. No, not enough focus on the only thing that matters, which is how do you make the game good? Is he going to mention, mention Hi-Fi Rush? Literally, how do you make it good? Period. Because that was a good game and people um, still got laid off. And hired all the right people, got all the right partners, and then just made a game that was not good enough. And there you go. Oof. I don't know. Uh, it's it's one of these things that is, tilts me from time to time. Guys, philosophy says, why didn't they just make good games? Well, it, well, this is another point, which is there is intention, and then there is process. So, for instance, let's say, uh, um, give me a genre. Someone give me a genre that is not Warcraft 2. <laughs> that is not RTS. Give me a non-RTS genre. Okay, Bruce Malt, MMO, perfect, fantastic. This is a really good one, okay? You wanna make an MMO? MMO is, an, is, is a, a class of game that's been kind of, of struggling. Things, which is that we need to hire engineers to solve the complicated technology needs, which would involve having thousands or maybe even tens of thousands of people in one location at the same time. How do you synchronize this? How do you make sure that you are not putting too much of a burden on bandwidth needs because if you have 10,000 dudes each of which has one megabyte of data that you're trying to transfer every minute like very quickly you have a prohibitively large bandwidth cost so we really need to solve a lot of the technical issues so this is why like people forget that you have to pay for servers and you have to pay for this online capability that your game has. And the problem that MMOs have is the way that WoW got around that is having a subscription service. People don't want to pay a subscription service and so now microtransactions need to be a thing. So now that microtransactions need to be a thing, your game's got to be good enough to get people to actually pay for them. Because if they don't pay for them, you can't afford the servers and your game can't stay online. So that's the problem that MMOs Choose have right that. now. So you know what? We should really hire a technical team right away to get started on that. My God, the M, one of them stands for massive, okay? So we're gonna need to have a lot of stuff. We should actually get an art team to make sure that we have 
enough assets created. Because we're not just going to have enemies and monsters. We're also going to have rocks and trees and water. And we're going to need a whole bunch of needs. There. So let's, let's get this team built, right? So again, I'm talking about production. Seems like we should hire all these people. But Have you like, even started making a game yet? What are we making? Very literally, what are we making and how do we even figure out if it's fun? It can feel from a production standpoint intelligent to really grow the engineering and the art team very, 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 very quickly because we'll need to make a lot of assets for art. We'll need to solve a lot of tech problems on engineering. So we may as well, we've got to hire them, right? But what happens if they're building towards an unclear target? What's the quote? It's like, if a man knows not to which port he sails, then no wind is favorable. Isn't that the perfect quote? That's quite a quote. If you don't know what your destination is, it's impossible to make the statement, wow, we did a great three months of effort. If you do not know to which port you sail, no wind. So Dan to man, you said, wait, so COD is burning money to keep COD 2 servers online. Yeah, not a lot of money for that in particular, but yeah, they are. Um, one example that I see is, you may not know this, but Twitch pays money to servers for you to be able to watch me right now. And if the higher resolution you're watching me, the more that they're paying. YouTube pays for the servers to stream my videos to everyone. A video gets like a million views. That video actually costs YouTube like thousands of dollars. People don't realize that. Just that one video. Wind is favorable. Arg, I kept it. <laughs> Servers so, are expensive. It can be very easy to convince yourself, okay, let's make a small-ish art team and a small-ish engineering team while we're trying to figure out what the game is. But again, until we really know what this game is, it's hard to be confident that anything we've made is actually killing it. And so when it comes to doing something like figuring out what would make a good MMO. Like I don't play a lot of MMOs. I don't really know what that- I'm right there entail. with you. We'll need a problem statement. We'll actually need a problem statement to determine what problem are we solving? What goal, if we meet, would excite and delight players? Concretely, why would they like that? I'm very passionate about this idea because I mean, frankly, I am not the best at any of the games that I have played. <laughs> I'm right there with you. Yeah. Focus back to content creation. I'm not the best at any of the games that I have played. I am not providing substantial educational value in a lot of regards like I Neither used am I. to. But I'm a good speaker. You used to. And I StarCraft very 2? Hard to be a Genius. And I think a lot after every stream of like, man, when was I kind of tired? When was I not doing a good job? How can I like do that? Some of you wonder why I end my streams early sometimes. If I feel like I'm being boring or my gameplay is not good enough or people aren't engaged like I want them to be, I'll just end the stream because I'd rather have a smaller good product than a longer bad product. A little bit better and blah, 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 blah. It's always one of these things that like, I experience it very personally. When I've been doing a mediocre job at streaming, I literally can see sometimes in real time, my viewership dropping as I'm being a uncompelling speaker. Right now, my viewership has been holding very steady, which is an indication to me that I've been doing a good job of and so on and so forth. And so, um, I think that there is a, 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 a almost a beauty to that kind of brutality where if I am not actually providing this is such a service, roundabout way of talking about just the gaming speak. industry, but it works. And I like that clarity. I like the clarity that it provides. Um, and yeah, so finally to put a little little cap on things, I think that the um, in the games industry, I think that there was a lot of poor planning with a lot of incredibly high quality employees, but a lot of poor planning that just resulted in a lot of businesses shutting down that in a lot of cases shouldn't have been formed in the first place or could have been planned to come Man, I did not expect to hear that take from him. Uh, I believe he's someone that is developing games right now and someone who is very pro game development. He's the first person I've actually heard put the take out there of a lot of these studios and people are being shut down, not because the individuals are bad at their jobs or anything, but how can you survive in this universe of video games when what you're putting out there isn't entertaining? It's 
it's true. It's incredibly, incredibly true. And um, not many people are taking that side of things. Okay, so we're going to jump into Call of Duty. Um, but first, 